everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for popping in today. Just take a seat, plump up your cushion and let's spend a little bit of time together. Now today we're going to do something for those of us with a sweet tooth and I thought this would make a lovely gift. Now I'm using mine as an Easter gift but obviously you could actually use this as a thank you gift, as a birthday, as a get well soon, um, new home whatever you would like and what I've done here is I've just got an inexpensive bar of chocolate and I've made a little wrap for it and this is the front and if I just turn it round this is the back it's very quick simple easy to do but this way you can just make I think it's just such a lovely gift now do you know what those of you that have got children grandchildren this will be a lovely gift for them to give you know teachers presents um I, I just think for me it's just something a bit different and our Lavinia stamps are perfect for this and I must admit I got out one of my stamps I've not used in ages so I was really pleased the blossom tree really pleased to be able to use that and I think it just fits perfectly so what I'll do I'll show you how I've come about it and to start off with, I've just got a piece of multifarious card and I've just got an inexpensive bar of chocolate and I've measured my card and it's no good giving you the measurements because it will depend on your bar of chocolate. So all I did was measured the sides and I made it so that it would just go little flap at the back look. So I just scored on my scoreboard so that this would wrap around my, my bar of chocolate. So I'm going to put that to one side. And what I need to do is I need to think in my head, this is my main area and this is going to be the back. So this will be the front. And then as we turn it round, that will be the back. And I've got the little flap at the side there. Are you with me so far? I mean, the easiest way to actually do it is to measure. I found this dimension first of my chocolate, cut my card, and then literally work my way round. And I've scored my card. For me, it's easier to score it and then stamp on it. Well, she says. It was with that one, so let's hope it, it, it works that way again. So I'm going to start off with the lovely forest hairs. And I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire, my pine cone. So I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're having a good week. And I have to say thank you for joining me again. I am so absolutely chuffed that so many of you do pop in. Now I've just over inked this, so I'm just getting rid of bit of that ink. Now I'm going to put this one about here. Now we've got so many, we've got the woodland hairs, large and small. We've got so many gorgeous stamps that will be perfect for this. But you see, I'm already thinking, I think I could make these as Christmas themed as well. Now, let's just have the next one. And, and I love it when we do things like this. It's just personalising, making little gifts and using the products that we have. Give that a minute. It's a silhouette. I say I'm using the brown. No black stamping today, just the brown. Now I'm going to come in, as I say, with my gorgeous blossom tree. I mean, look at this absolutely beautiful and it's just as it happens the right size so I'm going to use this with the brown again I say I'm going to keep my stamping into the the brown for the main images and I'm just going to plant that tree sort of there it's such a delicate stamp this and I was thinking blossom it's perfect for this time of year certainly here in Cheshire the blossoms just starting to get ready on the trees I notice beautiful magnolias are getting ready to flower but if I can just lift that up look at that it's just beautiful so we'll add a little bit at the top as well so I'm just thinking 
Oh, I've got some on my finger there. That's no good, is it? I'm going to have to wipe that off on my inky binky because if I don't, I'm going to end up with it all over my card. So I will have a couple of these just peeping over. Just onto here. And then just down this side. And then on the back, if you look, I've actually stamped the tree on its side and just sat one of the hairs on it. Just, just something for a bit different. So I wanted to turn that round to give me an idea of what I did, just to remind me. And as always, I don't have much space. You know, some of you fabulous crafters that send pictures in and we see you have the most amazing craft rooms and the space you have. You see, I'm not that lucky. And I'm sure my space, it just seems to get less and less. So let's pop our hair on. And again, I've just over inked that. So we'll pop him here. Just sat there looking. Lovely. And then we'll just add a little bit more. As I say, this stamp is lovely because you can almost use it as foliage. So we'll just keep a little bit going down here and then just a little bit here there we go so i'm just going to give that a bit of a blot just because again it's a slower drying ink i'm going to turn this around so i can just remind myself what i did on the front so what we're going to do now is just add some landscape but I need to be mindful of sort of my colours and what I'm doing where so I'm going to come in first with the elements the lime punch and I'm going to get my hill masks and I'm going to go for the the flatter one now I want to add some green here but I don't actually want to go because that's going to be my sky so I'm just going to get myself a piece of copy of paper and just put that there. And these are the things often, I don't know about you, but I get carried away. I enjoy what I'm doing so much. I have to remember these little bits. So just where that score line is there, I don't want to go over that. So I can just ground my hairs there. Let's pop it under. There we go. Again, in the lid, I know I say it every time, but just take some off into that lid. And then I'm just going to add a little bit on here. There we go. And then let's just add a little bit while I've got this mask out. Before we clean it, we might as well just ground this little bunny too. Lovely. So I'll give that one a wipe and we'll pop that one away. And then let's go for one with some hills. So if we do this one first, let's just position there. I think I like that. Now I want this lighter, so I don't really want much ink and also just want to be light with my gently, gently as I'm, just to give it a bit of perspective. So don't want it as dark. So let's just see if that we've got enough. Yeah, happy with that. Move that round. Now, if you had a few of these to make, you know, you can see how you could get quite a right I like that shape I won't ink up again I think I might have enough on here you could actually make quite a few of these I mean obviously you don't have to decorate the back 
I just think it's a nice touch. And if I'm going to give something, I want to be pleased with it, don't I? So pop the lid on there. But I do think once you're sort of into the swing of this, you could create quite a few. Oh, before I go, I just want to do this green. So do you know what? Just going to use that. Just, I nearly put the green away. But I just need to... With a bit of green ink. Across those two. There we go. So we can pop the Della Blue out. Just give that one a wipe. And let's get our circle masks. And I want the smaller one. Let's just, there we go. Now, I'm going to put it here but I don't want to go over here. So I need to just be mindful. And again, I'm doing it upside down just because it's easier for me this way. I don't want to put it there, look. I think it would be too, I just prefer it offset there. So into the lid, and this is my blue, my lovely blue brush. So gently, gently. And once I've got some round the moon, I'm just going to come across the sky again gently gently just to add a little bit I think I can just take a little bit more just to take that lightness off the off the sky even just a, a tiny bit more but onto the mask first yep and then we'll pop down and do the same on here we'll pop that one there Again, into the lid. And if you're anything like me, you'll be talking to yourself while you're doing it. You're sort of getting a bit of a routine. Well, I do. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Right, let's have a look at that. Turn it round. So you can see what we're getting. Now, I'm just going to wipe this up a little bit I've got some green ink on there and you know what I'm like if I get it on my hands it'll end up on my work let's have a look see I think that's looking lovely I'm just going to add a little bit because I want this to be eastery um, and spring like so I'm coming in with a little bit of Sundance and I'm very lightly just going to add a little bit around my blossom and just a little bit sort of across the, the sky. And it's almost just adding a, a sort of hint of, of colour. You won't see, I don't want it to be obvious. But I just want it to sort of, it's funny if it's not there, I would notice. Now, if I lift that up, can you see? It's only a hint of the colour look, but I think it just adds to that overall effect obviously it's not easy to show on here it doesn't pick it up so I must admit that that's coming on really well we need a little bit of shrubbery don't we so I'm going to come in I've got my flower collection and there's one of these on here that you know you shouldn't have favorites but I tend to use this one so much and I think we'll come in with I've got two lovely colors of the VersaFine Claire the cheerful and the summertime. And again, I'm thinking yellows, I'm thinking, I mean, obviously this doesn't look like daffodils or primulas or primroses, but I'm thinking to give that sort of vibe with the colours. That's my idea anyway. But I think it's all a bit of artistic license, isn't it, when we're stamping? Well, in my head it is anyway. So I'm thinking, I want to add some here, just above here, look. So we'll take the lid off the yellow and the orange and we'll do the yellow first. So I'm just going to add just a 
few little and again I just want them to look like the the shrubs and again here I just want a few poking through that blossom right and we'll give that a clean and then come into the orange again I'm going to start on the one furthest away and we'll just add a little bit of orange here and then same here look and I'm sort of overlapping the yellow but not going in exactly the same place and then we'll add a couple on here just so we've got those orangey tones poking through maybe just a little one behind there yep I'm just going to pop my lids on because if I don't, you know what will happen? I'll end up putting my hand in those inks. We want to keep it nice and clean, don't we? So we'll give that a blot. Now on the back, I'm just going to add my sentiment and I'm going to put just for you. I'm going to stamp in the brown. Now, obviously, if this was for a birthday, you could add the um, happy birthday. So this is from the Heartfelt Verses. And I'm just going to pop it slightly over the moon there. Look, lovely. So again, give that a blot. So now for our little finishing touches. And I'm just going to get my pastel pencils which are on the floor next to Eric. I'm going to give myself some space and first of all we'll add some shadow. So I'm going to come in with my brown and let's just have a little bit of shadow look. Now obviously the shadow like we did the other week it's just going to go this way because the moon's there. So we'll just and again, just smudging it with a, a biodegradable cotton bud. And that'll just, just gives a little bit extra, doesn't it? And we'll just add a bit of shadow across here so that it almost follows round, a bit of continuity around the design. And we'll come in with some here again. So we'll, we'll get our our white pencil now and again we're just going to come in and add a little bit and I'm going to lean on my kitchen a little bit of kitchen towel and I'm just going to add I'm sorry if my head gets in the way just a little bit of shape and a little fluffy tail look I'm not going to overcook it and a little bit on here look Again, give him a little bit of shape, his tail, and a little bit of highlight. I say I don't want to overdo it, just enough so we've got a little bit of detail. So I think, I think that's everything. Maybe just a little nose. Yep, right, stop, walk away. I don't know about you, but I do do that sometimes. <laughs> now I'm just looking, just seeing what I can do. Just if, a little tip, sometimes if you do this, you get a little bit of maybe a little gap. Um, and what's nice to do is you can just come in. I want to almost make it a little bit more orange. So your pastel pencil is lovely for this. But it almost adds a little bit of shade and almost grounds that foliage a little bit. And for me, it just feels if there's any, sometimes you can see air through the foliage. Do you know what I mean? It's not easy to explain, but if you make this design, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. It almost makes it more solid. It makes it look more real that, that, that there's foliage there. And again, because it's the pastel, I've just smudged it to fix it. I don't know if you can see, it just makes it look, for me, just that little bit better. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do is just add some Posca to my beautiful blossom but that may smudge so what I'll do is I'll pop this on my um, chocolate bar first and then I'll show you I'll add the Posca on the top. So all I'm going to do to actually fix it is so this is going to go this way so on here I'm just going to add a little bit of the red liner tape because I know this is a, a good, a very, very sticky tape. And I'm just going to put that straight across there. Grab a pair of scissors. And we'll just cut that. And I think I've just gone over here, so I want to cut that. And this red liner tape can be a bit of a tinker getting the, the backing off. So we'll just see if we, if we speak nicely to it. Do you think it'll play nicely? Oh, nearly. Come on. There we go. So what I'm going to do is get my chocolate bar here. Hold that. And for me, the easiest way I find is to hold that in place. Just pull that towards you. And then press down. And there's the back. Turn it round. There's the front. So my little finishing trick, I'm just going to pop it round this way. And for me, it's easier to do this once this is on if you were making these the night before and you've got plenty of time for it to dry obviously you could do it before but because i wanted to actually put this the little wrap around around my chocolate bar and all i'm going to do is add to my blossom and i've chosen two colors of my posca one's the yellow and i've got to be honest i don't know what this what's this color called Oh, orange. I thought it might have had a fancy name, but it's just orange. I treated myself to this one when I was doing my workshop the other week at Lavinia. I couldn't believe I hadn't got this lovely little orange. And it's nice this size. This is the, um, the one metre because obviously they have different size nibs. Now, I could leave that just with yellow, but I just thought if we add a couple little bits of orange into the blossom as well, it just keeps it that lovely cohesive design and we've got the yellow and the orange in the foliage and have you noticed my bar of chocolate is orange as well you see there's a plan i did think about it so i hope i hope you're impressed a little bit more i don't want to overcook it let me have a look i'll turn it round because i'm I'm sure I annoy some of you, sorry. I do a lot of things upside down, don't I? But that's just the way it works in my head. So there's our lovely front. And if I just bring it a bit closer, that lovely blossom. Now, you could add some glitter if you wanted. I just, I'm not going to with this one because I like it the way it is. I think almost the matteness for me, I like, if there's a word, matteness? No. Better, better English, Joe. Come on. The matte look to it for me is nicer. <laughs> Honestly, I think I make up my own language sometimes. So there's the front. And if you look round there, and when the front's dry, I'll just add some lovely Posca to my blossom there. So that's the one we've just made. And there's the one that I made earlier. And I've got to be honest... I reckon that's taken about 25 minutes. That's all. So I think that's a lovely, lovely gift. And can you believe I'm actually going to give chocolate away? Honestly, whatever next. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I hope it inspires you. It just shows you a different way of using our beautiful Lavinia stamps um, to actually create a gift or a wrap to go around a gift. You could even add one of your little gift tags to it as well with a little message on. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me. Have a lovely Easter weekend. Take care, everybody. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.